This tutorial will show how to use the rule of modus tollens in the proof lab. So, modus tollens works pretty much like the rule of arrow elimination in terms of how you can use it in the proof lab. Uh, you click on a conditional, and then instead of clicking on the antecedent of a conditional, what you want to click on is the negation of the consequent. And then you want to click on the rule of modus tollens, which is MT down here. And it'll show you, okay, if you've got L arrow N and you've got not N, what it'll give you is not L. Okay. Let's just undo that line. Um, let's see if you can do it in the other order. So, like, remember I said with arrow elimination, you have to click the conditional first, and then you click the antecedent of the conditional, or it gets really grouchy to do them in the right order, even though really the order of the lines doesn't matter. Um, and then it turned out that it got grouchy, but it would work. It would do it anyway. So let's see what happens if we apply modus tollens a little kind of backwards. We're not really working it backwards. Um, but, you know, we're, applying, we're clicking the lines in the other order. So it's still giving you the same picture, so that looks good. Okay, and it says you selected them in reverse order, but it worked just fine. And it just did the justification the way it's happy with. Um, so it says you selected the premises for this application of modus tollens in the opposite order from what was expected, but they do represent a correct application. So you can do it either way. Don't worry about this error message. Um, I don't care what order you do it in. So that's how the rule of modus tollens works in the proof lab.